Hey guys, Shadowstrike1 here today, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can go about port forwarding your Xbox One to give you an open NAT, which will allow you to improve your connection and resolve a lot of problems you might be having uh, with connecting to friends, maybe par problems with your party chat, and also just all around uh, maybe slower matchmaking times with issues trying to connect to other players. Um, first things first that you need to understand is what exactly your NAT is. Uh, well, NAT stands for Network Address Tran Translation. And uh, basically what that means is that your internet service provider, uh, be it Comcast, Verizon, Google, whatever, whoever's giving you your internet, uh, gives you one IP address, which is a certain address, it's a list of numbers, that uh, corresponds to your connection. Now, what your router will go and do is take all your devices you have connected to it, that's your printers, your computers, your smartphones, your Xbox, anything that needs internet access, and combines them all into a, and assigns them all a private IP address first, and then uh, that's just shared within your network to allow them to communicate with each other. It's going to know, hey, this device, uh, the iPhone, is trying to communicate to the printer to print off something. Uh, so it has their own little addresses there. But uh, once it has all these private IP addresses, the NAT will then translate those private addresses into a single IP address, which is the same one that is given to your uh, given to you from your ISP. And this just lets you connect all your multiple devices. Now, the problem with it is that uh, sometimes uh, there's different settings in your NAT. There's open, moderate, and strict. And what this means is different security settings um, that allow pretty much it more difficult for other devices to communicate with one another. Um, in theory, this is a really good idea to prevent you know, hacking and problems like that. But for things like gaming, you're going to want to be able to connect more devices. Um, it's just <laughs> better for your overall connection. I can go to more detail about it, but that would take a lot of time. So first things first, you're going to need to find out what your NAT currently is. And how you do that is on your Xbox One dashboard, you're going to want to go to your settings. And how you do that is just anywhere on the dashboard, press your menu button or your start button and you're going to bring up a new screen. You're then going to go down to the gear icon that says settings. Go ahead and click that. And it'll bring you to your settings. Next, scroll over and click network. Then you'll be able to see your current network setup. As you can see in the middle section here, it'll say I'm currently wired and my NAT type is strict. Now that's something we want to change, is that's going to give me a lot of problems with connecting to other players. So I'm going to go ahead and click Advanced Settings, and then it's going to show me my IP address settings. Now these are just random ones that were given to me, uh, and don't worry, I'm going to go ahead and change these, I don't care if they get out there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click IP Settings, and then I'm going to go to Manual. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select an IP address. And now, you can't just choose one completely out of the blue. First, we're going to go back and we're going to look at that uh, automatic setting of what it gave you. And you can see for the IP address, I have 10.0.0.232. Well, that's, that's all right. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and choose something a little different, but I'm going to keep in mind those first three sections. So I'm going to go to manual, and I'm going to choose 10, I'm going to say dot zero dot zero dot 60. And we're going to enter it. Now for my subnet mask, that's going to be a little bit different. You can take the one that's from your uh, the automatic settings, but it's a little bit better to go ahead and figure that out directly from your router. And uh, how we're going to do that is that we're going to switch over to our computer real quick, and I'm going to have you follow me on that. So now we're on our computer, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to find that subnet mask. What we're going to do is we're going to go to run, which you can either do by uh, pressing your start button, and then uh, you can type in run in your search box, or I'm sorry, uh, command prompt. 
in here and it'll bring you up right here or simply you can just type CMD and click enter. Next you'll have this cool box here that'll uh, tell us everything we need. Now you're going to need to type in IP config space forward slash all. Press enter and it's going to give you a bunch of information. Again, normally you don't want to share this with everybody, but I know how to and, uh, I know how to go ahead and change things such as my MAC addresses and everything. Um, so in this tab, we're going to look for a couple different things. Mostly, we're going to look for underneath the uh, Ethernet adapter. We're going to look for uh, the subnet mask right here. And as you can see, mine says 255.255.255.0. Okay, so uh, now that we've got that settled, another thing we want to uh, keep in mind is our default gateway. It's 10.0.0.1. That's what's going to be our router address. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later in the video. So just keep this in mind. First, we're going to go back to our Xbox. And for our subnet mask, we're going to put in 255.255. .255 dot two five five dot zero and we're going to press enter for our gateway we need to go ahead and put in that router address ten dot zero dot zero dot one there we go now we have our manually entered IP address settings now, for our DNS settings, we're going to have to go back and look at our uh, computer one more time. So now we're back at our computer, and we're looking down here towards the bottom. As you can see, it says DNS servers, and I've got a couple different addresses here. We're going to look at these numbers right here. I've got DNS servers of 75.75.75.75 and 75.75.75.76. That's going to be our primary and our secondary DNS servers. So we're going to go ahead and switch back to our Xbox One. For our primary DNS server, I've got 75.75.75.75. Secondary, I've got 75.75.75.76 So there we go. We've got manually set IP address and DNS server. Now we need to go to our computer and go into our router information. So we're going to switch back. We can go ahead and forget about this for now. Uh, but keep in mind that gateway address. Mine was the 10.0.0.1. Yours may be 192.168.1.1. That's another uh, one of the more common ones. So we're going to go in here and we're going to open up your favorite internet browser. Uh, it might be Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera. Um, I actually use Google Chrome. So I'm going to open that up. Sorry for the blinding lights here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to 10.0.0.1. Press enter. And as you can see, I'm on Comcast. Uh, so if you guys are on Comcast, your login screen will look a little bit similar to this. If you have an aftermarket uh, router, like a Netgear or uh, Linksys or something, yours will be a little bit different. Um, on a lot of your routers and modems, it'll have the username and password. Uh, somewhere on it, maybe the bottom or something. Um, however, the default login address for all these is going to be admin, and the password is simply going to be password. Uh, it's really good to change these. I've kept mine uh, the basic just for this tutorial, uh, just because yours will be this by default. Um, whenever you get a chance, go ahead and change that. Even though someone will need your password to connect to your internet in the first place, uh, as soon as they do that, they could then log in here, change the password, and have full control over your internet access, and you won't be able to do anything about it until you completely reset your router. So go ahead and log in. 
uh, it's going to Comcast automatically ask me, hey, you're using the default stuff, do you want to change it? I'm going to say no for now. And it's just going to load some stuff real quick. And now what you're going to want to do is go to some setting in here that'll say port forwarding. Um, Comcast users, you'll be able to follow me. Um, any other router users, just look for a setting that'll say port forwarding. It'll be right near another setting that'll say port triggering. Um, it'll usually be somewhere in like the advanced settings or more, something like that. For Comcast, we're going to go right here to advanced. Now we're going to look at the port forwarding and we're going to see that for me it says enabled. Now we're going to have to add an address. Now we're going to add the service and it's going to say the service, the common service, you can just keep it as other for now. That's fine. It's not really a big deal. And for the service name, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it uh, Xbox. One, one. And the reason I'm doing that is that we're going to have a few different services. For the service type for our first port, we're going to change it to UDP. And for the server IP address, it's going to be that IP address we chose, so 10.0.0.60. Now remember, your IP address may be different from mine. If uh, you have a 192.168.1 you know, 80 or whatever you want to choose, stick with those first three numbers. Uh, mine's only the 10.0.0 because that's what my uh, basic range is. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you're going to have to look into uh, class A and B IP addresses. It's a little interesting read, but I'm not going to go into it here. Um, for the server IPv6 address, you don't really have to worry about that right now um, because Xbox One's using IPv4. Now for the starting port for our first service, we're going to choose 88. And end port is also 88. And go ahead and click save. Then add a second service. For the service name, I went ahead and uh, copied and pasted it just because we're going to have to do this about eight times. So Xbox One 2. Our second service is going to be UDP and TCP, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And for server IP address, again, 10.0.0.60. Now the starting port for this one is going to be 3074. And end port is also 3074. I'm going to go ahead and save that one. Going to add another service. Again, I'm going to name this Xbox One 3. For this connection, it's going to also be TCP UDP server address again 10.0.0.60. And starting port for this one is going to be 53 and ends at 53. Go ahead and save that. Going to add another service. Name this one four ten zero zero sixty. Oops. And this service is going to be. I'm sorry. Uh, this one is actually going to be TCP. And we're now going to do eighty. Go ahead and save that. Add a fifth service, 10.0.0.60. And this one is going to be a UDP service with the starting port of 500, closing of 500. Add a sixth service. This one is going to be UDP, and it'll be 10. Dot, oops, sorry. 10.0.0.60. This one will be 3544, closing 3544. Four. 
and add another service. This will be our last one, Xbox One 7. This service is also going to be a UDP, 10.0.0.4, or I'm sorry, dot .60. And starting port here is going to be 4500, closing at 4500. And that'll be all of our services for Xbox. So the ports you're going to add, the start port, end port, or it'll be open and close port, are going to be the same as uh, the same start as they are the end. I've got 88, 30, 74, 53, 80, 500, 35, 44, and 4500. Now, uh, you may be wondering what all this TCP UDP stuff is. Um, these are different uh, transfer protocols. Uh, UDP, what it does is that it sends information and all it does is send it and there's no check to make sure that all the information got there. TCP, on the other hand, uh, does a little handshake first to make sure that uh, the information is sent and is all received. And if any information uh, is lost in that transmission, uh, transmission it'll be resent. Um, now what that means is that uh, say you're watching a YouTube video. Um, now you may want to watch the whole video, so in that case you'd want to use TCP. What that means is that it's going to make sure that you get all the video if any part of it wasn't sent to you. It's going to resend to you first before it goes and displays it. Now on the other hand if you're watching say live TV, um, you're going to then in that instance use UDP because you know if you miss a second of video it doesn't matter because the point of it is having a live transmission. Uh, the same is used in gaming. It'll be uh, information such such as, hey, we want to make sure that that shot that they sent actually did get there, so we'll go ahead and use TCP to make sure that that is sent how it is. Um, also, that can be used for uh, people pairing up together uh, in matches, whereas UDP is for some information that isn't necessarily as important such as a uh, voice communication or something like that. You don't want your voice stuttering and being backed up and backlogged. Make sure that you get every syllable that they're saying. So now that you have all of these settings made, you can go ahead and close out of your router settings. Uh, and at this point I would recommend resetting your Xbox um, fully. Uh, how you do that is you do a power cycle by unplugging the power from the back of the Xbox and from the wall and keep that off for about 10 seconds or I'm sorry more than 10 seconds what you're going to want to do really is watch your power brick and look at the LED light and make sure that light goes out and then go ahead and plug it into your wall and then to the back of your Xbox again and then go ahead and power it on and this will reset everything you'll start fresh and your NAT setting should be set to open Thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe. Please hit a like. Share with your friends. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, guys, and I'll talk to you guys later.